we can't stay at this spot too long because the frequencies are too high. But I want to show you that the carrot patch we planted for him, her, it, or they beside their potential burial site is coming up. Check this out. The watchers have shown up. We've got to hurry. This is the potential burial site. Here are the carrots we planted two weeks ago while taking privet. The teeny tiny carrots are coming up. We gotta go. Today's story centers around creatures that not only live here, here, and here, but potentially inside my house. Get my six. Hulk smash. Get my six, but forget about the potential Bigfoot Sasquatch in the forest. And forget all about the gift bearing ghosts in the graves for now. So we got something potentially quite a bit more serious. Some sort of creatures or beasts or beings or entities in the attic. I'm gonna show you exhibit number A. You remember this? If you've been following this channel for any time, you'll know I've been looking for this for months. Some flashlight, it's the best flashlight I have. I finally found it. You know where I found it? found it in my attic. I did not take it in the attic. My wife is scared to go in the attic. My son can't get into the attic. Yet I found it in the attic. Have a look at this. The attic opening, and I'm using the flashlight I found up here right now to come up here and look. I found this flashlight sitting right here and it would appear as if perhaps I'd used it when I put away the Christmas decorations and I just simply left it here but that is not the case I guarantee you that I promise you that because I have a drawstring right here which goes to a perfectly working light okay but that is not where the horror came. Sure, some questions came in finding my light that I lost months ago right here. But the true terror came with what I saw when I turned around. Now that was creepy enough. I know I did not take that flashlight up there putting those Christmas decorations away. But what was creepier is what I found when I turned around. That, that is what I saw when I turned around. Not the pile of Christmas decorations and wrapping paper and the screens I thought I'd lost over there, or honestly thought I never had when I bought the house until I found them up here at one point, but that hideous black gob right in the center. Obviously the nest of something as hideous as the glob itself. You can imagine my fear combined with curiosity when I saw that.
we can't get so distracted by the story of what in the heck's in my attic that we forget to keep looking for what may or may not be back here. Definitive tree knock. So what would you have done if you'd have found that in your attic? Would you have touched it? Did I touch it? Heck no, I didn't touch it. Would you touch it? Look at that thing. Now, here's the strange thing. There's no way in and no way out. Or at least it appears. Is it even a nest at all? Oh, look at this, a bird feather. What in the heck kind of bird feather is that? That is strange. It's gray. That's not a crow feather. It's not a turkey feather or... Is that a chicken feather? We never had any chickens this color here. Is that a blue herring feather? Now here's the strange thing about that blue heron feather. Now, I never thought about this until I came up here today to tell this story. And this is going to tie it all together at the end as far as what I think may be living in my attic. It's literally a spirit which, you know, people have said Wendigo. A spirit that can possess others and make them act out. You remember the story which brought most of you to this channel, not most, but many, about the uh, annoying neighbor with the crayon, and I'd given him the pseudonym Mr. J while speaking during that video. Once we finally ran him off, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad verbiage, but I mean, you know, we, we just want to be left alone out here, and, but once we finally, once he finally chose to, to do that, after we put up the gate and made it clear, this blue heron started coming around, eating the fish out of our pond, right in front of us. And I remember we made a video. You guys are really gonna have to get my six right here because the sun is shining in my face. I'm having a hard time seeing back here, but I did detect that movement. And that sun should be lighting this entire area up for you back here now so that you can see the he, she, it, or they that may or may not live in the forest back here behind my home. They are very active in the mornings, especially in spring. Okay, so we're making this video and it's on our channel. You can go find it if you want. I titled the video something like, Mr. J has trained his blue heron to come steal our fish. And I remember specifically while recording that video, when I would mention the name Mr. J, that bird would look at me with piercing eyes as if it were looking through me as if to say how did you know we are one and the same i remember thinking that at the time and thinking why that must be crazy yet as time has gone by and as we've seen more and more strange things on our land and now in our home i'm starting to think it might not be as crazy as i originally thought could there be a Wendigo type spirit out here that possessed an individual to make him act out to be completely socially uh, challenged, we'll say, in his behavior? Uh, then, did this, this spirit, this entity, possess that bird? Is this too far of a stretch after finding the feather of a blue heron in an unidentifiable nest inside my attic? So, 
trying to see where he, she, it, or they enters, we find that we have an air vent here with a screen, and there is a hole in the screen. So something has been coming in and out of the screen. Something sizable. But something could also be coming up and down this chimney. But where do they enter the nest? If it were a bird, it would nest on top, but it's not done so. <sighs> ah, droppings. What sort of droppings? Well, at this point, there was only one thing left to do, and that was to open the nest. We'd seen the scat. It wasn't squirrel scat. I mean, potentially fox or raccoon, but neither could get inside that hole in the screen. This was spirit activity, had to be, but manifesting with some physical evidence. I mean, maybe when this entity takes on some sort of physical uh, host, so to say, maybe it eats or something and it has to relieve itself or excrement like that. Some sensible, sensible explanation along those lines. But the only way to truly find out would to, to, to make sure it wasn't a nest of squirrels or a nest of raccoons would be to open it up. Just bite the bullet and open this thing up. Perhaps we should just open it up. Let's see if we can train the light on it. Look at this, how convenient that we do have stuff up here. There's no evidence that anything lived inside this mass either. It's like something just brought in hay. It's as if the hay collector is living in my attic. And that was perhaps the most terrifying part of this experience. Straight back. Ooh. Wow. Guys, hang on. After I wrap this up, we're going to zoom. I don't think you can see it from this angle, but we're going to zoom. You remember the Veins Runs Cold video you guys mentioned? What looked like somebody in a white t-shirt? <sighs> One spooky scary story at a time, Crazy Lake. So the most terrifying thing about opening that nest was in finding that there was nothing, absolutely nothing at all. So what in the name of all things holy or not, is living in that nest in our attic. Could it be? That thing right there?